right. Hello, thank you for uh, coming and thank you for having me. And so my name is Rob Warren and as Peter mentioned, I'm with Wave Accounting. Uh, we are a Toronto-based tech startup. We, uh, our product launched um, one year and one week ago, I guess. So we're, we're just past the one-year mark, uh, and things are going really uh, in a great direction for us. And as Peter mentioned, I'll just reiterate, um, there's a couple of different uh, angles that I was, I was wondering what sorts of things I've been talking to you about. I can talk to you about our entrepreneurial path our business model and that sort of thing, or I could talk about a product which is aimed at small businesses and entrepreneurs. I thought, well, I could do both of those things. So my, my presentation will sort of bounce back and forth, but I think the narrative will make most sense that way. Uh, and hopefully through the process of doing this, uh, you'll learn some stuff about us and hopefully uh, come up with some interesting questions. Feel free to throw the questions out at any time or I can take them uh, at the end of the presentation. Okay, so uh, I guess the question is, uh, the first question is why did our co-founders, James Lockery and Kirk Simpson, get into the business of small business accounting. Because it's not as if there are no small business accounting applications out there. <clears throat> the, uh, we'll start with the market size. Our sweet spot is nine employees or less. Companies with nine employees or less, that includes solo entrepreneurs and freelancers. And meeting that description, there's about 29 million businesses in North America alone, hundreds of million more around the globe. And the thing that's fascinating about them is that two-thirds of them are not served by an existing accounting application. <clears throat> Excuse me. So think about this. So every one of those hundred million companies should be filing taxes at some point. Every one of those companies will succeed or fail based on whether they bring in more money than they spend or not. Every one of those businesses could be helped along their path to success based on how well they understand the finances of their company. And yet two thirds of small businesses use nothing more than a shoebox full of receipts and a spreadsheet, and those are the sophisticated ones, right? There's enough of them that just gather up the receipts and hand it off to an accountant and frankly have no idea until they file their taxes, which is months after their fiscal year end anyway, they have no idea of the financial health of their company. They are not, they're not able to use that information to help them make smart business decisions, let alone things like go to the bank and tell <clears throat> and, and, and explain to the bank why they're a good risk for a loan. On top of this, and this, this comes into our business, uh, our business strategy, is that this is a very hard market to reach. Small business owners don't tend to cluster in any very easily identified space. You just have to look at the sorts of advertising, um, for example, for the Rogers uh, small business phone lines, right? They're blanketing general public media with ads that they know by definition are not aimed at most of that market because that's the only way to reach the market. So this is a hard segment to reach. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, this comes into our business plan. So backing up to the 66% not served, we look at the question of why. Why are they not using an accounting application, even though there are strong reasons why it would help them to use an accounting application? Number one is it's too hard, right? People spend their, their um, years of post-secondary education trying to figure out accounting. Small business owners don't have any inclination to spend that kind of time. Uh, the process of doing accounting traditionally takes too much time, especially things like manual entry of all of your transactions. Uh, on top of that, accounting applications are too expensive, right? We're looking at, on average, $200 a year for a simple accounting application for a small business. <clears throat> and all these things take place in a very unpleasant space, right? You associate accounting with taxes, with paying taxes, with doing taxes, the whole notion I'm sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> the whole notion of doing your accounting is tied psychologically to things you don't enjoy. Why would I want to spend $200 to pay for, some, for a product that I associate with such an unpleasant task? So this is where we jump in. This is where we've got an opportunity to make a difference, uh, to create a product that, that has traction. The first thing we do is, is we deal with the, the manual entry component of, of the time wasted with accounting applications. Fundamentally, there's just about no transaction that a small business owner is going to do that doesn't leave an electronic trail, right? I pay for something on a credit card, it leaves an electronic trail. If I pay for something on a debit card, it leaves an electronic trail. I deposit a check into my bank account, we have an electronic trail. All of these things exist electronically. The, the few exceptions are cash transactions, 
and most small businesses don't do most of their transactions with cash. Even then, the cash transaction will exist as an electronic record. It's simply not segmented out into its component parts. So WAVE, as a preliminary step, allows you to connect your financial accounts, your bank account, your credit card account, that sort of thing, with the accounting application itself. And then all the transactions are imported automatically <coughs> into WAVE, eliminating all of the manual entry that's required and usually associated with accounting. So saving those weeks. Uh, I'm assuming that at least some of you have, have run small businesses and have found yourself you know, the two weeks before tax deadline with nothing but a shoebox full of receipts and entering that into a spreadsheet. Well, this eliminates all of that. The, the, the manual entry is, is taken care of electronically. Then there's the accounting is too hard part of the equation. Uh, using smart technology, WAVE is able to eliminate the things that require accounting expertise for the small business owner who doesn't know anything about accounting. Um, it's simple things like, if I issue an invoice for $77 and then there is a deposit into my bank account for $77, well, since WAVE is aware of, that, of both sides of that transaction, WAVE is able to match those things, just ask you for approval. Is this actually, you know, is this deposit actually a payment on this invoice, for example? And then is able, if you approve it, Wave does all of the, the offsetting transactions, the accounting stuff, in the background, and the small business owner never needs to understand that. And then Wave provides all sorts of easy to understand information that basically tells the non-accountant business owner what you need to pay attention to next. Hey, this bill is coming due. Hey, this invoice is past due. You should really look into collecting it. Um, and, and while, while at the same time giving you a clear uh, understanding of where your money is coming from and where you're spending your money so you can make smart decisions based on that in the future. On top of all of this, where there's the whole unpleasant how much do you usually spend on accounting question, a wave is free, 100% free. It's not a free trial, it's not a free limited version, free for 30 days, free until you have a certain number of clients or a certain number of transactions. Wave is simply free, completely free, you never pay a penny. So how do you make money? Well, this comes obviously into our business plan. Uh, it's a big part of what we're doing here. We believe in the philosophy that as the cost of acquiring and carrying a new customer approaches zero, it makes sense to just drop it all the way to zero and find a different way to monetize your product. Free has the huge advantage of letting you build scale. But, you know, obviously, a free product will be easier to acquire your next customer than if you have an expensive product. And those things, joined up with the, with the fact that data lives in the cloud, changes the game. Uh, it, it creates all sorts of possibilities. And by the cloud, in case anybody's not clear on what I mean, it means that instead of the data living on a computer somewhere for our customers, it lives online. All the data is online, lives in a centralized database that's secured and protected. So that means that instead of having one business with their information tucked into a, a shoebox full of receipts and another few businesses with, with their own shoeboxes and more shoeboxes and more shoeboxes. You have everything in one place in the cloud. So imagine the possibilities that that creates. First of all, we're, we're talking hundreds of thousands and, and soon we hope millions of small businesses with their complete financial picture in the cloud securely uh, pooled in that space. Well, what if you wipe out all the personally identifiable information so that your information is safe, right? Wave will never sell your information, never pass your email on to an advertiser, nothing like this. So you strip out all the personally identifiable information. Imagine what it means from a customer acquisition perspective. This is where we switch hats again, and I, and I stop selling you Wave as a product, and I start explaining to you Wave as a, as a business. Imagine if, if you're a company like Bell or Rogers or Grand & Toy or Staples or anything like this at all and you are able to identify in WAVE 10,000 small businesses of exactly the right size for your product who are spending X dollars with your competitor. Imagine if you could then put a special offer, a special money saving offer in front of those WAVE customers that's going to save them money, but it's going to bring their business over to you. Huge, huge advertising opportunity. That's, that's essentially step one of our, of our revenue model. Imagine what all of this data means from a business intelligence perspective as a separate revenue stream. The, the ability to know who in what sorts of industries, you know, are you a photographer, are you a massage therapist, are you a web programmer, who is spending what kinds of money, I'm talking again aggregate numbers, 
which of these market segments are spending how much money with what sorts of companies in what sorts of categories? Where is spending going up? Where is spending going down? Um, being able to see all of that data in near real time, all of this super, super valuable business intelligence. Um, imagine if you are the small business owner yourself, being able to identify data for companies that are equivalent to yours. For example, I am a two-person photography operation operating in the greater New York City area. Well, imagine if I could find out, well, how much do those other companies on average spend on marketing and what's their revenue? And maybe I can decide that I need to spend more on marketing or I'm spending too much on marketing. Just think about the, those sorts of benchmarking opportunities and the ability to learn about your business and about other businesses' practices. And then, from, again, the perspective of the small business owner, imagine being able to pool with tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of other small businesses in your jurisdiction and be able to get a better deal on the products and the services that you need to buy anyway for your business. All of that um, becomes part of WAVE. Also, once we've got everybody pooled into the same space, we can start looking at an ecosystem for payments where the transactions happen right within WAVE. So this fundamentally, and, I, and I've touched on all of these points already, this is our business model. This is how we get paid. Number one is customer acquisition, advertising basically. Big companies come to us and say, we want to reach small businesses, and we get paid a fee if that, if for, for each of these, these introductions that we broker. We do all of this, like I said, protecting the privacy of our wave accounting customers. We never pass any information, period, complete full stop on that. We never pass any information over to anybody else. The offers only come one way. The big advertiser presents an offer inside way to a small business owner. If the small business owner chooses to pursue the offer with the advertiser, then they can facilitate that communication and we get paid by the advertiser. As I mentioned, we can monetize business uh, intelligence. We are getting into the business of, of ancillary products. We, have, uh, we are in a beta phase right now for way to pay. We're also a separate standalone product that we are charging a fee for. And once we get our whole ecosystem going, then we can charge fees for payments as well. So that's that's what we're doing and, and how we're doing it. And this is a bit of a look at how things are going so far. Uh, we launched November 16th uh, last year. So I guess we're about we're a year and two month, uh, a year and two weeks old right now. In our first year we signed up more than hundred thousand small businesses around the world in more than two hundred different countries. So so our, our you get that nice little hockey stick line that everybody likes to talk about and everybody loves to see when it's their own product uh, uh, on the line. Um, we closed a Series A round with, uh, led by Charles River from Boston and Omer's Ventures here in Toronto uh, just this uh, fall. Um, I may be premature on this, and this is what Peter was talking about. Before, before we all came into the room here, it looked like the voting was done, so I'm hoping that I'm not going to be made a liar. Uh, Canadian Innovation Exchange is happening today, and it looks like we may have won the uh, Audience Choice Award for that, so that's a uh, uh, nice feather in our caps. We were named to Deloitte's Companies to Watch list. We were invited to present at the Under the Radar Conference in Mountain View, California. We were invited to present at the Swift CBOS Conference here in Toronto, it's the International um, Finance Conference. So things are definitely going uh, in a great direction for us. Um, as I mentioned, we've got a, an interesting business model, an interesting way of looking at the business opportunity. Uh, we are a Toronto-based startup, started by two guys who put their, uh, their own resources on the line to build a product that uh, has, has taken off. Uh, and on top of that all, it's a product that I hope holds some interest for you folks as entrepreneurs. Free accounting doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Thank you very much for your time. That's terrific, Rob. It's always great to see uh, an exciting business model based around accounting. Yeah. Uh, who knew? I think a sexy accounting story. Sorry. <laughs> Are we doing questions at all? Or, uh, yeah, we can take those questions. I, yes? I have quite a few. Uh, okay. Uh, bear with me. Let me read them out and then you can decide what you want to answer. Okay. Who really okay. wants to get more? First of all, um, a lot of my customers currently use FreshBooks. Uh, I would like to know. Uh, I, I sort of see where you're coming from, but I'd like to know your things. Your business model, um, I think you've explained, but the, one of the questions that came up to me was whether you um, op um, whether you go directly to somebody like the banks and have them fund it to be able to get access to your customer base too. Uh, confidentiality. Um, you've got basically all the information about me and or my company 
Um, I don't let anyone see that. All right. And yet, okay. Um, last, uh, second last, reaching out to the cloud. We talked about the cloud. Well, funny enough, I have not been able to get to the cloud sometimes. And also, the cloud's run by somebody. And if that somebody goes out of business, what happens? Um, and the last is, it sounds very much like what you were talking about with regards to benefits of being a member is uh, Groupon uh, does the same sort of thing without having to be a business. Is that enough questions? <laughs> sure, all right, let's see how quick I can go through and let's see if I can remember them in order. All right. Number one, FreshBooks. Great tool, Toronto-based, if anybody doesn't know it, it's an invoicing tool, free if you've got three customers or less paid version above that. Um, it's not a complete accounting application, so for some people, FreshBooks is all they're going to need. Uh, if what they're looking for is full double entry accounting that you can take to your account, that you can take to Revenue Canada and, and base your entire business intelligence on, FreshBooks doesn't take you all that way. If what you need is a very sophisticated invoicing tool, FreshBooks is a really great tool, and FreshBooks interfaces with Wave, so you can integrate the two, pull your FreshBooks data into Wave seamlessly, and get your whole uh, <laughs> double entry accounting application as a free add-on if you wanted to look at it that way. So. That's the freshman's answer. Good. Second question was which one? Sorry. Um, the second question. All right. Do we go right to the banks? Uh, yes. Um, confidentiality okay. is this model. Okay, confidentiality, no information ever leaves our hands and goes to anybody about any individual. The most we would ever do is release information. We haven't done it yet. We may do it in the future, saying things like, oh, uh, Small businesses in British Columbia tend to spend 20% more on cell phone service than small businesses in Ontario, right? We'll, we'll release that kind of information. I think it's great information for us to release. It's great for us from a business perspective and brand perspective and helps a lot of people. We would never ever say, oh, you, by the way, this guy over here, he, he spends more than somebody else, right? So it would always be an anonymized and aggregate. Um, do you encrypt the information on your, on your site? So, uh, we use 256 bit encryption for all the data in transit and for the bank connections in particular, which is one of the most sensitive things that, that we do, uh, we use a, a third party that the big banks themselves use for uh, data aggregation uh, because they're able to offer a, an even stricter level of security than we'd be able to do, plus they're able to facilitate connections with tens of thousands of banks around the world, which would be hard for us to manage out of our startup and lastly them. Um, so I think that was two and three. No, no, number, or one of those questions was about, do we go directly to the advertiser? Yes, right now we are going directly to the advertisers, uh, which is why we're starting with the biggest companies. What we're hoping to do is roll out a model in the future that will allow smaller players to work with us as well without, but still be able to scale it. So, you know, we're, right now we're going direct to companies like Dell and Amex. Um, Hopefully in the future some small one-person operation in Singapore that wants to reach its own local community will be able to, to arrange that. Uh, Thank you. So what is preventing me from copying you, number one, and what is preventing QuickBooks, for example, to take their aggregated information, but they already have, they also have online version, right. as well as the standalone version. Right. Well, you know, the one thing that we, that is working in our favor right now is that a lot of the big existing players find it difficult to switch business models very quickly to give up the millions of dollars they have on the table and go through. So that's one significant difference. Another part of it is, is execution. Could somebody else do it? Theoretically, yes. We're on the ground first. 100,000 small businesses in our first year moving in the right direction. We've got funding enough to, to, get, the, to get us to our next stage. Um, and we believe we've got the team to get it done right. Do we have some secret formula? We believe we've got uh, the right, we believe we're looking at the business opportunity in the right way and that we're building the right tools to reach the right customer. Everybody else is going to, if anybody else chooses to get into the space, they're going to believe they've got their own secret way of doing it as well. We're banking on the fact that that, uh, that, that we've got a, a smart play going here and our investors have agreed with us so far. So One last. time will tell. Yeah, my question is, is it targeted just to solo entrepreneurs or to corporate type <coughs> incorporated ones? And if so, is it integrated to CRA? Right. Um, any small business, nine employees or less, is what we define as our target. That includes corp incorporations, so corporations, it includes partnerships, it includes sole owners. Um, it can be an individual person. It, we, we identify it as a company, nine employees or less, because companies, when you get to 20 or more, for example, they tend to have their own financial people on, on the team, and those financial people come with their own loyalties to software. So our product is 
perfectly acceptable and viable for a bigger company, but we're not identifying that space as uh, our primary market opportunity. And is it integrated We do not currently feed any information uh, to anybody, no tax organizations or anything like that. We will be building uh, integration points for things like tax filing in the future for sure. All right, fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you.